An independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it may respond to some of the issues raised by the Biosa State Governorship Elections Petitions Tribunal when it is availed of the full judgment of the case. The INEC National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Fessor Sokoye, stated this in an interview on Monday in Abuja. The commission was reacting to the nullification of the state's governorship election, which produced Dwoye Diri. Okoye, however, noted that the advanced Nigeria Democratic Party ANDP nomination for the election was invalid, while the party did not exercise its rights guaranteed in the fourth alteration to the constitution by filing its suit within 14 days of the accrual of the said right. Okoye recalled that the ANDP was one of the political parties that signified its intention to contest the November 16, 2019 Biosa governorship election. According to him, the party conducted pri uh, party primaries and submitted the name of one Peter David as its deputy governorship candidate. And we still have in the studio with us uh, Chris Wando, the publisher of CKN News. And of course, we would quickly go through um, a conversation with regards, um, you know, what's going on in Biosa State. It's not been, you know, about three, you know, days ago, barely three days ago that, of course, the uh, tribunal gave its ruling. So what do you think may have changed? Well, um, I believe the, um, the various um, contenders um, have various reasons, different reasons. So every party came with its own um, reasons why it decided to come to this tribunal. And I know that, um, <clears throat> I know that um, about three days ago, um, three of those um, this thing were uh, dismissed by the tribunal. But this particular one, nobody, we, we didn't see it coming. Yeah. Uh, in fact, <laughs> nobody took a judicial notice of it. And the judgment just came. And it was two to three, um, two to one. Um, judgments, um, the chairman of the, of the panel of the tribunal gave a contrary uh, judgment in favor of, of, of the governor. But as it were, the problem for me is that PISA um, election or election has become very worrisome. Um, and um, I have to also blame INEC, despite the fact that INEC has come out with um, a, a statement saying that they'll come out with. Where we find the present um, governor, um, Diri, ordinarily he wouldn't have been the governor, if you remember what happened. Yeah. Just at the eve of the APC candidate being sworn in, um, he got a judgment um, that uh, now disqualified the elected governor there because of his deputy, uh, because of the certi certificate issues. And I personally felt that the issue of the certificate would have been settled before the election, either through, by INEC through verification, or also security agencies started with the responsibility of going through yeah. those. So how were they able to let that sleep for them to go into the election? Um, now we're also having this now. Um, INEC, according to the judgment, um, omitted the logo of this particular uh, party. And that is worrisome to me because what we are seeing now is a situation, and it has happened in several states. What we are seeing in a situation now is not where people's votes count any longer. It is where people vote overwhelmingly for their candidate, only to, for that to be uh, eroded by the, right. yes, by the judiciary. So the judiciary now determines who becomes governor, who becomes senator, who becomes. A, and that to me, it is not, the, it, it is not democracy for me. Okay, right. if you understand what I'm trying to say, people should be so, INEC should be thorough whenever we're having any election to make sure that all the necessary loopholes and rest of them, we are completely and completely dealt with so that at the end of it, after election, there will be minimal um, issues in the court or at the tribunals where all the efforts be put in place by both INEC and the voters will just be eroded what, just by this kind of judgment. So I believe this, this gives the APC another chance to once again try um, um, to rerun in the election. Uh, uh, sincerely, uh, I'm, I'm just a student of law, I'm not yet a lawyer, so I don't know. So <laughs> I believe that um, we'll be able to understand this with time. Because some people are APC supporters were jubilating in Yenugua yesterday and saying that, yes, we have an option. But I don't know whether it's a pre-election matter or post-election matter or whether APC can come in as a candidate in the forthcoming election or not. But don't also forget that it's not yet Uhuru. Yeah. The case will also we definitely get to the Supreme Court. It is only when the Supreme Court has determined and said that, yes, there must be another election then. 
you can have. But for now, I don't know whether APC can still be on the ballot or not. But what we need to is let's wait and see how this pans out at the Supreme Court and let's look at judgment of the Supreme Court. What, I can what would you expect Governor Doye Diri to be seeking right now? Well, um, he has to go now. He must go ahead um, with what he's doing while he appeals. Um, governors, he, he must not stop doing what he's doing. I know that some names were already sent to the Bayelsa State House of Assembly um, as, to be considered as commissioners. That should go on. Um, I, I'm sure that he has other programs for people of Bayelsa. That should go. 90 days is three months. The, state, the governor cannot just sit and wait on the judgment. It, it, governors must continue. Whichever way it goes, whether in, favor, in his favor or not, governors must bet. As he rightly said, he has the right to appeal the judgment, which he said he has already uh, spoken to his lawyers, and definitely um, it will get to the Supreme Court, then we'll see what the Supreme Court will do. But the issue is that we are going to the Edo election. We're also going to Undo election. election. We don't need to allow this type of things to happen. It has happened so many a time, and INEC must be very, very thorough in as If for any reason, yes, they say that the deputy governor to the candidate was disqualified because of age that he was 34 instead of 35, so he was disqualified. Whether the, the party was able to present another deputy governor prior to the election within the time stipulated time is what I don't know. But let's wait and see what I know comes out um, as a defense. And don't forget, the governor was not joined in that suit. It was INEC, I think. So it is INEC that most likely might also have to appeal the judgment. Yeah. So the governor, but the governor is going ahead to uh, appeal that. Do, do you also feel it's time that we also Take a look once again at the um, age set for you know being able to uh, run in ele elections in Nigeria. But uh, I thought that we had a not too young to run. I thought that had been settled. Uh, for me, um, that had been settled to a large extent. Also, although we still have, but that we also need serious constitutional amendments. Okay, for the president, for the governor, for senators, for members of, uh, of House of Assembly, or even local government chairman. For me. What we should be looking at, people that can be able to do the job. Yes, age limit. The Biden, that is going to be the next president of, uh, that is contesting under the, uh, is, is about going to 80. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump is almost 80. If not, yes, it should be about 80. So many other leaders of the world are. Right. The problem for us is that let us make sure that we bring the best people forward and encourage people like you and I who are ready to serve to be able to have the opportunity to serve. And that is that's that for me. Chris Wanda, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you very much for having me.